Hello neighbor, do you know what this is? This is a master part. It's made of aluminum and I'm gonna use it to make a silicone mold. The silicone mold will allow me to make duplicate cast urethane parts, just like this one. Won't you follow me on the journey to making this silicone mold? I hope you will. My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. We're gonna start by making a riser that is laser cut out of several layers of cardboard. And you'll see the cardboard lines up exactly with the front and the back of this little vehicle form. The sides have these little wings and that's gonna prevent the top half of the mold falling down. You'll see later. The whole mold will be made inside of this reusable mold box. I have videos about that and I waxed it there. Now we're gonna seal up the laser cut cardboard riser. We're gonna use shellac for that. Wonderful material. This will just sort of seal the material and prevent the silicone from entering the pores of the cardboard. Dispose of your waste solvents properly. We're gonna use a little bit of white glue to adhere this riser to the mold box, right? It's not gonna be permanent because we just put wax on the inside of this mold box, but we need to just hold this riser in place while we pour the silicone. It'll be removable with the white glue. We're gonna use the same white PVA glue to glue down the master part on top of this cardboard riser. Just gotta position it in place, and then we're gonna clean up the excess glue that's kind of oozed out. I've got a little tool here, and we're just cleaning things up. This is a clay shaper from Royal Sovereign. I'll link to that in the description below. It's a great modeling tool. And I'll link to all the materials that I can find on Amazon so that you can use them for your projects as well. It's time to pour some silicone. I'm using a 1040 from Silicone Inks. It's not available on Amazon. You can go to their website and find your local distributor to get some. I use this almost exclusively. It is a fantastic, universal, excellent silicone. The silicone has been vacuum degassed in my vacuum tank for probably about 20 minutes. And you'll see I pour it from one location and I let it flow out around the part. I don't pour it all over the place, this eliminates lines. I'm tapping it to try to raise some of the bubbles to the top surface. I put it back in the vacuum tank at about half vacuum to get some more trapped air out. Now I pop the bubbles and this is so I can have a nice flat surface once the silicone has cured. We need to expose the master part so that we can remove the riser and pour the second half of the mold. Thanks for watching my video. If you are a first time viewer of one of my design and making videos, I have weekly videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for being a great neighbor. All right, I use a nice flat knife here to remove the master from the riser. It peels off. You can actually see there's a little bit of silicone that got underneath there, but it peels right off. We have a tiny little bit of flash around the inside of the silicone that we need to remove. The beautiful thing about this mold is it's gonna be very, very easy to remove the cast part. You will see in the end. I'm basically making a two-part mold that is very much in the vein of how you would have an injection mold. That way the two halves come apart very easy. All right, neighbor. Let's add some sprues and some vents. And to do that, we are gonna use some resin rods. These were cast inside of straws and then just had the straw outer lining removed. They are urethane and so they're easy to form and shape. And here I'm putting a little chamfer on the bottom of this sprue. The reason for this is we don't want a big contact patch where the sprue meets the actual part. We want that to come off very easy, but we still want the resin to be able to flow into the master part easily. This chamfer allows you to cut or break off the 
sprue or the vent in an easy kind of way. We're also going to use white glue here to adhere these to the silicone. It will not permanently bond or damage the silicone in any way. We just merely want this white glue to hold these sprues and these vents in place while we pour the rest of the silicone. We don't want them to float away. This white glue uh, basically allows that bond to happen, but then it is very easily uh, removed later on once the rest of the silicone has dried. And I'm very careful to make sure that I have the correct contact onto the master and it's securely in place. We need to add some release agent to the silicone so that the new silicone pour does not stick to the old silicone. We're going to use some petroleum jelly that is thinned out with naphtha. The, the solvent evaporates and it just leaves a thin, thin film of release agent and I paint this in with a brush. The only thing that sticks to silicone is silicone. So you don't need the release agent anywhere else. Let's pour the top half of the silicone. And here you can see those extra wings at the top and the bottom that are gonna keep this piece of the mold from falling down into it. Again, I pour from one spot and let it flow out. This is a very nice mold. We'll remove these sprues and gates and now we'll go around and very carefully separate the two parts of the mold. There's our master and there's our second top cavity of the mold and it's gonna be very easy to remove. I'm gonna trim off the very bottom little lip of the silicone so that the mold lays flat. With this mold making technique, I will just pre-fill the mold, then I will add the top cap second half of the mold. We'll use some straws as overflows, and then we will use a syringe to pour in the one sprue after we tip the mold with the rest of the resin. In a future video, I will cover all of this in detail, as well as some resin effects and some other molding techniques that go along with this process. Super easy to pop the mold out, remove the back half. This is the reason that I made this mold the way it was. There's no uh, vents or sprue holes that go through the silicone. They are entrapped in between the two halves of the molds, thus making it super easy to remove from the mold. Thanks for watching, neighbor. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy. Thank you.